Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, how I love, I love to call, his name is Jesus, sweet Jesus, every day, every day, I know your name. Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus how, I love, how I love, I love to call, anytime I need him, Jesus, Jesus oh Jesus, Jesus, every day, every day, I know your name. Remember a time I felt so all alone When I needed you, Jesus All I had to do was call Sometimes in the morning Even late at night When I got up on my knees, Jesus Everything was all right Because of Jesus Oh, Jesus, Jesus how, I love, how I love, I love to call, his name is Jesus, oh, Jesus, every day, every day, I know your name, ooh, trouble surround me. his way around <laughs> his name is Jesus and he's right on time his name is Jesus precious name of Jesus how I love I love to call welcome to Bible study let us pray oh heavenly father we approach your throne of grace giving thanks to you Thank you for all your many and wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you uh, to forgive us of our sins, rather than by our various thoughts and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you will do. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to be with our sick and shut in at this time. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would just give them a reason, portion, health, and strength. Oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our uh, man serving on t this evening. We just pray that you will. Give, give him the, the mindset to remember the things he have studied on this past week to give your word, oh, Heavenly Father. We just thank you and we love you. In your son, son Jesus Christ's name, amen. And now, our beloved minister. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study. Oh, family, we rise to give God glory and we rise to give God praise. For our great God is, in fact, 
worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, how magnificent, how marvelous, how majestic, how mighty, how matchless, and how meaningful is the name of the Lord our God. It is a thrilling experience for us to assemble here at this specified time for spiritual nourishment and encouragement. Listen, if you are visiting this channel, we want you to know that you are our honored guest each and every time that you report to this place. The lenses open up on welcome hinges. And now to my brothers and sisters, these superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ, you know what time it is. Oh, how sweet it is to be a child of the King. Now there is much on our horizon and we're looking forward with tiptoe anticipation. And so we want to plug in here again, our 2023 Family and Friends Day. That's right, it's going down in H-Town. Here at the South Union Church of Christ, that's Sunday, April the 2nd, 2023. We want you to invite your friends and your family. We're going to have a fabulous and fantastical time in the Lord. And of course, after morning worship, there's always a splendid fellowship that awaits all who come. Now, for this extravaganza, we have none other than Minister Anthony Walker of the Highway 231 Church of Christ. Let me tell you, my friends, if you have not been blessed to hear this man of God, you want to make sure that your face is in this place. There is a word of encouragement. There is a word of exhortation from one of God's great preachers. And so we look forward to having Brother Walker come our way and just deliver a powerful and motivating word to all who are here. So invite your friends and invite your family. Sunday, April the 2nd, 2023, 9 a.m. We look forward to seeing you in this place. And now, without any further ado, if you have your Bibles, if you have your electronic copy, if you would, please navigate over, meet us or beat us, Matthew chapter 22. The Gospel according to Matthew, it is chapter 22, and we shall pull up the parking brake with verse number 37. Matthew 22 and verse number 37. Uh, we will begin reading this text. The Bible, the word of God reads, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, now, if that's in your Bible, just type into the live chat, it's time for our blessing. Amen. It's time for our blessing. We would like to use for a thought theme and thrust on today, the heart of the matter, part three. The heart of the matter, part three. Now, family, we have gone on record. We have gone on record over the past several studies that we are living in some dangerous times. But the times in which we live are dangerous because man is not thinking spiritually, but yet thinking carnally. Amen. We are not thinking spiritually. We are yet thinking carnally. And as long as we operate in carnality, we will not be able to please Almighty God. We're always going to have a rough go of it here in this world as long as we operate out of our feelings 
and not being controlled by the facts of God's word. Amen. Let's dig into this text. Now, if you are familiar with this passage of scripture, then you know what's happening and what's taking place at hand. If you just move up just a few verses, you see two groups that are here gathered before Jesus. I say they are attempting to interrogate Jesus. And some would even say dare intimidate Jesus. Listen to what they say. Verse 34, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees were two religious sects that believed various points of truth. Now they mingled in their own philosophy with the truth that they believed, but they were considered to be very religious minded. They necessarily didn't always get along either. But on this situation, they conspired together. <laughs> you see, it's told that the Pharisees heard what Jesus had taught. And Jesus had asked them questions and he made the Sadducees stumble in their own mess. Amen. So when the Pharisees caught wind that they had stumbled at the teaching of Jesus, now the Pharisees want to apply heat and pressure to the master. And this is what is said. One of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Now watch the, now watch the, the aim, the motive, and the uh, perspective of this lawyer. Listen to what he says. He, he wants to know what's the most important principle. What he's really trying to do is he's trying to get Jesus to minimize certain points of the law. Now, when he speaks of the law, he's speaking of the Old Testament. He's speaking primarily and contextually. He's talking about the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. And so he's trying to trip Jesus up in this. And he wants to know, what is the greatest commandment? Which one are you going to select? Which ones are you going to leave out? Jesus goes straight to the top. Amen. I say he goes straight to the top. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul. Watch it now. And all of your mind. Amen. Now we said we're discussing the heart of the matter. So Jesus is shaping them to see that if you're going to be right with God, you have to put God first. Amen. Now, how are you going to put God first? It must be a priority to put God first. Amen. I say God must be our priority. As a matter of fact, he must be the highest priority of our priorities. And so Jesus says, listen, if you are going to put God first, watch it now, not only will you put God first, but then you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, on these two hang all of the law and the prophets. So what are you saying, Jesus? If we love God, if we cherish God, if we are devoted to God, if we make sure that no one comes before God, amen, not even our own thoughts should precede the word of God, amen? Our own thoughts should not be ranked higher than God's thoughts, than God's word, than our loyalty to him and to his word. Listen, when we prioritize our lives correctly and we place God at the top, everything else will fall in line. No wonder Jesus would remind his disciples, Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first. Come on now. I see you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these, what? Things shall be what? Added unto 
you. All of these things shall be added unto you. You know what our problem is in the world today? Is that we've allowed too many things to cloud and then corrupt our minds. Come on, talk back to me in here now. Would you agree with that? What is the heart of the matter? Why do we have such a hard time many times in life? It's because we are easily distracted and we have placed other things ahead of our allegiance to God. And when we do this, it clouds our judgment and it confuses the mind. Amen. And the reason it confuses the mind is because we were pre-wired to worship. We were pre-wired to worship. Listen, if you don't worship God, you will worship something or somebody. We were pre-wired to worship. In other words, we come pre-installed with a worship chip already embedded in our human DNA. How many of us know about pre-installed items? Houses are now, these modern houses are now outfitted many times with pre-wired intercom systems, pre-wired doorbell or pre-wired alarm systems. Already the wire is there. You just have to tie a few loose ends and put your device in place and you've got what you've been looking for. Amen? Pre-wired. Come on. Let's lift that up a little higher. We have been, as humans, pre-wired to worship. Now the choice is either we're going to worship God or we're going to substitute with something else. Amen? No wonder Jesus would remind us he says, if you want to follow me, the first thing that must be done is what? Denial of self. Oh, talk to me in here, somebody. Denial of self. And it's not always easy to deny self. As a matter of fact, this falls under the umbrella of temperance, being self-controlled. It's not always... Listen, when life begins to irritate you and rub you the wrong way and you have to deal with ups and downs, frustrations, things that you couldn't see, hindrances, barriers, barricades, stumbling blocks, amen, things that create debris in the roadway of life, when you have to deal with these things, it's not always easy. And sometimes we give ourselves really too much credit and we don't know how to control or self-govern because we get wrapped up in life. Oh, but family, if we want God and we want the favor of God to fall on our lives as God ushers us and leads us, takes us to higher levels and to the next dimension of faith, we must learn to put God first, and that's a matter of the heart. You see, God reads motives. God is looking at intentions, and while I can fool you, I can never fool God. <laughs> I might be able to run game on you, but I cannot run game on God. Amen? Listen, for my young and youthful Christians, no cap. Amen? <laughs> no cap. I cannot run game on God because God reads motives. So that's why we have to keep our hearts pure. We have to keep our hearts clean, unpolluted from the pollutions in the world. See, let's just think about this. As we, as we wind down on a Sunday night, let's think about this. What are some hindrances in life? If you would plug this into the live chat. What are some hindrances in life that can cause us to be distracted? And let's just name some. What are some hindrances? We know oneself, a man, can get in the way. My, my thoughts, my passions, my, my sensual desires, that can get in the way. We know that. So oneself, family, 
amen, can get in the way. That's right. Our ambitions, I know that goes back to self, but it can get in the way sometimes. Um, sometimes we are trying to live for others. We, we want to look good in front of others. So the pride of life can get into the way. Amen. The pride of life. I want this prestige and I want people to think well of me and, and I've got to fit in with this crowd and fit in with that crowd. But we really need to ask ourselves, do we fit in with God? Amen. Do we fit in with God? Do we fit in with the Lord? Amen. Do I fit into his word? Am I putting him first as he deserves? You've got it. What are things that keep us? Material possessions. You've got it. Material possessions. We put houses, vehicles, clothes, whatever kind of uh, endeavor that we're in at the moment. We put that before God, groups before God, groups of people. Amen. But listen, when we want to hear him say, well done, we must make it a priority to make God the priority. Are you with me? Amen. Listen to the text as we close. Jesus says, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. Watch this. This sums up the entire ministry of the prophets and it also sums up the entire intent of the law. You got that? The entire ministry of the prophets is summed up. Keep God first. Keep God first. Keep God first. And then the entire summation of the law. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two, listen, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. If we want this world to be a better place, we must appeal to the mind of men. Amen. We must appeal to the minds of men. And that's the lesson on a Sunday night. <laughs> We're trying to reach the heart of the matter. We want stronger families. Got to get to the heart of the matter. Want a stronger marriage? Have to get to the heart of the matter. Stronger relationships with your brother and sister in Christ? Got to get to the heart of the matter. And if we want our communities to be God-fearing, we have to get to the heart of the matter. We have to affect, influence, and even uplift a man. And it all begins in the mind. You got it. All right, family, we're going to make it. Listen, if you're here and you're tuned in, I want to give you encouragement that all hope is not lost. No, no, all hope is not lost because Jesus showed us how to overcome the challenges of this world. And if we obey his voice, if we obey his voice down here, we will hear his voice up there and we will live with him throughout endless ages. Listen, you can make it through whatever challenge you are up against. I'm here to declare and decree over your life that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, your Lord. You have been outfitted to win and be victorious in every battle that you face. And I pray that you will hold on to God's unchanging hand and never, ever, ever let go. All right. That's all the time we have for tonight. We pray that your soul has been encouraged and motivated. We can make it because we're going to keep God first. That's the heart of the matter.
Now, if you'd like to partner with us in Bible study, if you have a Bible question, please call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen. Of course, always remember that here at South Union, hey, we love you. And there's absolutely not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord. Have a peaceful, prosperous, and productive week. To God be the glory. Good night. This train, hear the whistle blowing. Everybody coming on. Oh yeah, hey, you better get ready. You know we're riding with Jesus. Oh oh oh, oh this train is going to heaven. Hello, saints of God and lovers of the truth. Mark your calendars for Family and Friends Day 2023. We invite you to join us as we worship our great God and Redeemer on Sunday, April 2nd at 9 a.m. Enjoy a powerful and impactful word preached by a dynamic vessel of God, Minister Anthony Walker of the Highway 231 Church of Christ in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Come and enjoy the spirit of faith and fellowship. It's Family and Friends Day 2023, Sunday, April 2nd at 9 a.m. We look forward to seeing your face in the place. Oh.